that certainly the contributions from this side of the chamber yeah. throughout this debate have focused on the real impact this yeah. has on yes. people's lives, yeah. yes. whether they be people with disabilities, people with access to children at weekends who <coughs> can't maintain that, and many, many other. Uh, these are real people and there are real consequences on their lives, and this is not just a policy that's about facts and figures and statistics, it's about what how it affects people's lives. I will give way to them. Very grateful to the Honourable Gentleman for precisely that reason and the fact that Northern Ireland will be worse affected than any other region of the United Kingdom. Does he welcome the fact that the Northern Ireland Executive and the political parties in Northern Ireland are joining together to try and find a means of preventing this hurting the vulnerable people of Northern Ireland? Absolutely. Um, applaud what's happening in Northern Ireland. Um, can I, so, on to some of the statistics. Um, so, um, um, these just focus on the Liverpool City region. Since the introduction of the uh, bedroom tax, rent arrears on, in, on Merseyside have increased by £2.2 .2 million. Pounds. Not two £2.2 million pounds by that amount. Uh, the loss of income that that represents could build 124, 12, 25 more houses in the region. And of course that would create jobs and all of the other consequences. 60% of those in the Liverpool City region who find themselves in arrears because of the bedroom tax are doing so for the very first time. It's not something they've got a habit of doing, it's a direct consequence of the bedroom tax. I'll give way to my honourable friend. I thank my right honourable friend for giving way. We have some frightening statistics in Salford too, but those are very large numbers, and particularly the, lack, the loss of spending power. Uh, the minister is in her place at the moment. Does the figure he's given, the figures he's been given for Liverpool City Region, cover her constituency, and will she be explaining to people in the region how these things came about? I, they, they do indeed, and I, I do hope that the uh, minister, when she comes to wind up this debate, will address some of these. Uh, statistics because they, her own constituents will be interested in how she responds to them. Um, in addition to those uh, figures I've already given, Mr Speaker, uh, we also have experienced an increase of 30% uh, in void properties, that's empty properties, but particularly uh, in three bedroom houses there's been a 130% increase. And so it's a policy, I think those statistics show why, you know, it's not just a matter of uh, releasing unused bedroom space for those on the waiting list. There actually is no demand for those three bedroom properties and that's why they become void properties. Spice. And the result of this uh, is staggeringly a loss of rent to local landlords of £616,622 pounds per month compared to, in the same period, last year £397,000. So these are the direct consequences in one city region of the introduction uh, of this uh, bedroom tax. Now I just want to finish on a point. Um, where are people supposed to go to? What we have in our city region are actually an excess <coughs> of three bedroom properties yeah. and a shortage of two and yeah. one bedroom yeah. properties. Yeah. Now we can debate all day who's responsible for that, yeah. but that is the fact of the matter. Yeah. So where are the people going to go to? Uh, there's nothing uh, available for them to scale yeah. down into a social housing because there is a shortage there. Now the interesting thing, which has been mentioned previously, the York University Centre for Housing Policy report, which has been referred to quite frequently during the course of this debate, they conclude that 41.5% of those in that position, that is losing money because of the bedroom tax and having to move, will go into the private rented sector. That is uh, a, a, an un unbiased, a peer-reviewed report that has looked at it, and that's what they conclude. 41.5% of those people concerned will go into the private rented sector. Now here's the rub. This is supposed to be saving some money. Yeah, yeah. A three-bedroom social uh, house in uh, housing association house in Knowsley, average rent £74 a week. A three-bedroom uh, private rented sector house, £132 a week. Where's the saving in that? And if they scale down, 
to a two-bedroom private rented sector house, £115 a week compared to the £74 that they began with. Um, Mr Speaker, the truth of the matter is, as the, uh, my right honourable friend, the member for Greenwich and Woolwich, said earlier, this is a policy that is morally bankrupt. But it's also incompetent. Yeah. It presumes that people can just move around at will and the property that is right for their circumstances exists somewhere in the area that they already live. It doesn't. And the fact of the matter is there's growing evidence that this policy, rather than saving money, is actually costing more. Yeah.